Hey guys, today is a very nice Sunday. I have a lot of things to do, but nevertheless, I want to get a bit coding in, so let's start. All right, so a lot of you told me that I should put the synthetic properties not in on create view, but in on activity created instead. And that's a good tip, but what I wanted to you wanted to do instead is use view binding instead of synthetic properties and instead of find view by idea because View binding has some benefits over these other two approaches. View binding makes our views type safe. We can't accidentally uh, uh, cast these IDs into the wrong view type and they are null safe. We can't accidentally uh, try to access an ID that is not actually in the layout we are inflating. So I already implemented view binding. I did record it, but the recording failed and the video was complete trash. No, I didn't want to revert it. I think that would take away this whole um, live approach because I, it wouldn't be uh, me doing it the first time in this project. Anyway, I just looked into the documentation. I just googled Android view binding fragment documentation uh, first result. And what we had to do is we uh, had to go into the build.gradle file, the app level one, and then add this part, view binding enables, uh, enabled equals true inside this Android block. So before the closing curly brace, and then we can use view binding in our project for all our layouts. And then I uh, went into our task fragment. This is the only uh, class and the only layout so far I've implemented view binding in. And in here, we have to do this for all fragments and for all activities where we want to use view binding. We have to create a binding object. This is of type fragment task binding. This name, this class is auto-generated by the view binding library from the name of our layout. So the layout for this fragment is called fragment underscore tasks. So the view binding library generates this fragment task in Pascal case. So every new word starts with an uppercase letter and then it depends binding. So if it was called fragment underscore task underscore detail, this should be called fragment task detail binding. And then we assign our binding object like this. We take this class name again, uppercase, and access this static method, inflate, pass these arguments here, they come from the onCreate viewer method. And then we uh, return uh, binding.root. This is where before we would return our inflated viewer from this onCreateView method. So we would inflate our view and return it here. Binding.root is the root view of the layout we are using. So in our case, fragment task, this is the coordinator layout. So we want to return this whole layout just as before and we do it like this when we use view binding. And then when we have done this, we can access our views like this. This looks differently than last time. Now we call binding.recyclerVitas. And by the way, if you want to select text like I've just done it, you just have to hold Alt down while you are dragging with your mouse. So this is how we access these viewers now on our binding object. Um, at the moment, I think we only have the recycler view in there. If we had other views in there, they would also appear on this binding object. Again, this name is auto-generated in camel case from the ID we gave it. So it took this idea and turned it into camel case. And the benefit of this is that this is now type safe and null safe. So uh, accessing these views on this binding object is more safe than calling find view by idea or using synthetic properties. You can get less exceptions or maybe no exceptions at all there. However, one problem we ran into, which again I recorded, but the recording failed, was that it didn't recognize this fragment task binding. In the, the first time and invalidate caches and restart didn't work syncing the project again didn't work i already thought i was doing something wrong we couldn't compile our project we couldn't start the app but rebuilding the project worked so i just did build rebuild project and then it worked i think this is generally the problem of data binding and view binding that they uh, sometimes have problems because of this generated code so if something doesn't work try rebuilding try invalidating the caches and restart. And sometimes, at least in data binding, you have to also sync the Gradle files again. If you want to see something funny, 
my PC is actually so loud when I am recording. Not right now, because I'm not recording on my PC right now. I'm recording on phone. Anyway, the PC is so loud that I actually have to build a pillow wall around it to soundproof it a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I will try to get a new one soon, which should be quieter. Anyway, when we are now start the emulator again, everything works as before. We are just accessing our recycler viewer via view binding. And I have not studied view binding in detail yet, but this is basically how it works. So uh, it's not a complicated topic. Data binding is complicated because in data binding you can put a lot of binding logic directly into your XML layout. This changes everything. But data binding is basically a, just a better find view by idea as far as I know. Now depending if you use it in a, a fragment or an activity, it works slightly different. But this is basically how it works in a fragment. Now, now I'm seeing that they are nulling this here on destroy viewer. This um, is something I want to uh, read up right now. I saw this by accident, but maybe this is important. So let's see. So when I try to find something specific in Google, especially when I have a piece of code in mind that I think should appear in the solution, I like to put them between quotation marks. Like what I want to find out is do we have to set binding equals null in on destroy view? So I put this into quotation marks and I put view binding into quotation marks because this is what we are interested in. Because otherwise it will take view and binding as separate words, which um, doesn't give us good results, but I actually I don't find much about it. I find one medium blog post. How to reduce view binding boilerplate. Kotlin magic. So hinten this guy is is everywhere. Yeah, it's a bit too complicated. The stuff I'm. We will just go with the approach from the documentation. So I guess we have to uh, overwrite on destroy viewer. And. Ah, okay. This is why they made it nullable in the documentation. I made it late in it. I was wondering about that, why they made it nullable. So I changed this from late in it to a nullable property. So we can set it to null. Apparently this is how it cleans up after itself. Now the problem is this one here. It's, my, uh, the smart, it's complaining here because this property could be nullable. I'm not entirely sure. Let me type this into Google as well. Android view binding um, smartcast. Okay, in the documentation, they did it by overriding the zeta. Um, it looks all a bit odd to me, but they use this as an, just as an internal variable. This is why they give it this underscore prefix, but this is not how I want to do it. I actually just want to change this variable, not the usage down here. Private val binding get this syntax is really confusing me um okay so it works like this, but I'm still confused about the way it works. This is how they have it in the documentation. 
they have this underscore binding variable which is nullable they assign it an on create viewer they uh, turn it to a null they set it back to null and on destroy view so we don't leak anything and then they have this binding variable which is then the one we are using here and they all write together and then have this double bang operator which should which should mean that we can uh, call our, our stuff on here without wondering without having to care of nice situations but this should also mean that we can get a crash if we don't set it to a, if we forget to set it to a value so if i comment this out i should not get a warning anywhere right but this should now crash okay so this is how this works i guess what we lose is the, a little bit of null safety but if we take care of setting this all up properly then uh, it will work and i have to say that i'm also not yet um i don't know the whole kotlin syntax yet what i was wondering about is why we have to override the setter and why we can't just design it like that what happens when we try to run it like that i'm still in the process of learning kotlin so i don't know the whole syntax yet we try this again i would like to have Okay, the IDE is frozen. Now it's working. Let me put this cam somewhere else. I actually have this cam on my desktop. Anyway, I think you are wasting our time when I try to look that up. Um, we have to override the getter here. I'm not 100% sure yet about the uh, syntax of this, but it's working, so let's leave it for now. Uh, actually, I think why we have to do it like that. If we remove the get, then we are trying to access binding to this not nullable variable, right? Fragment task binding. And when we try to do this, underscore binding is still null. And this is probably probably why we get a crash. Anyway, if I'm wrong, you can tell me. But this is how the documentation implements view binding in a fragment. And then we just access our views like that. Obviously, having to set this to null all the time will give us a bit of boilerplate code, but since we won't have many uh, fragments in our project, we can just leave it like that. There, there are rocket ones for, them, for that, but they seem to be uh, quite complicated. Yeah, nice safety, type safety. Okay, so let me take a quick look at my notes. I also wanted to start putting our classes into packages. So, let me open the sample project. Because what they do... Now we have to uh, wait a moment. What they do is, they divide it into uh, the different screens. And I would like to do uh, that as well. I don't know, is this what they call package by feature? Is task detail something we could we would consider a feature? Or is it just uh, packaging by screens? How do you call it? Anyway, I will try to replicate that. So I create... I mean, the app they have built is very similar to ours. So we can copy a lot from here. Package. Tasks. I think we can't do anything wrong with that. And our task fragment will definitely live in there. And later our task view model. Data. They have task inside the data package, so I will do this as well. Package data task. 
I mean, maybe I will learn the stuff on the go. This is a topic I seem not to be able to wrap my head around. Packaging. Anyway, now we have our adapter. Any main activity. Data source. Task adapter. Ah, okay, they have that together in the screen where it belongs. So tasks as well. And I think the idea around this is that you uh, can just quickly navigate between these files which are related. If we would divide them into uh, packages like fragments, activities, adapters and all that stuff, then we would have to uh, jump around a lot. Okay, and what activity do they have? Task activity. I think this is the only uh, activity they are using. Oh, they have this in tasks as well. So... I guess I will put this into tasks as well, because this activity is the container for the task fragment and also the task detail fragment. So I guess it belongs to this whole task feature, because this is the container for all these views. So I guess I will put this in here as well. And we will leave it like that for now. Now the ID is complaining here. This is this. this data binding and view binding stuff it seems to break a lot so i will try the good old rebuild project then i will try a sync project with gradle files sometimes this helps and there it is okay and again i don't want to make these episodes too long because it makes problems when i edit them but one more thing i wanted to do or two more things first of all the user told me that I should put comments above these different dependencies to better organize them. So I guess we would write navigation component. Let me know if this is fine or if I should be more detailed here. And then I should not hard code these version numbers, instead I should use variables. And I know that there are two different ones. We have these ones that we can put in here. And we have the ones that we could put into this other build.gradle file. And I think they are like, this is like this one here, Kotlin version. I think they are like global variables, I guess, which work across these different files. But since navigation is only in here, we didn't have to add anything here. We can put it directly into this file. So what I want to do is I want to go to... Uh, Android navigation component. I want to get to the documentation where they are ah, here. This is what I want to see because I want to do the same they do in this documentation. Dev. I don't know what dev stands for, but this is how we create these variables for these version numbers. And the benefit obviously is that we don't have to change this in many different places. So we just say nav version. But the IDE is trying to tell me them something. Newer version uh, is available. Two point. Uh, because something is wrong with the variable. Enough version, enough version. Um, ah, okay, we have to use a dollar sign in front of it. So that's that. Let's see if, our, if everything still works. It should. And our project is now 0.1% cleaner already. Anyway, it's still working. It's great. And this is what I wanted to do here. We start with the packaging. We started adding new binding. And then we will see us in the next episode. Take care.